Because that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we did what we always do. We're dependable, we're reliable, and every time we go to eat the food, what are we gonna do with the food? We eat the food. Jake and we are Neverland Navigation, Navigation Co. Co. And today we are in a very chilly Disney Springs, Morgan, mm -hmm. because we're trying out a new restaurant. We sure are. New to us, anyway. New to us, yeah. Paradiso 37 is here um, at the landing in Disney Springs. I have never heard a single thing about this restaurant. I haven't either. I'm going in with no expectations. Yeah. So we're going to try the food and let you know how it is. You ready? Yeah, I'm Let's ready. Let's go. So time for our reservation. Yeah. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we did what we always do. We're dependable, we're reliable, and every time we go to eat the food, what are we gonna do with the food? We eat the food. We eat the food, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, Paradiso, Paradiso, yeah. Paradiso, Paradiso 37. 37 was no exception. Right. Now this is like, how would you describe the kind of like, it's like 40 degrees out, by the way. Oh yeah, Third, so more like Paradiso 37 degrees, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> Sitting outside um, Paradiso 37, 37 yeah. in Disney Springs comfortably wearing winter clothes. And it's 37 degrees, probably. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're willing to do this for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unseasonably cold for Florida. How would you describe the kind of cuisine they've got on the menu at Paradiso 37? Um, Latin inspired. Yeah, it's kind of got like a coastal Latin Caribbean uh -huh. kind of, ins and some like Mexican, Mexican. food vibes yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a mishmash of all those different cultures, definitely like a fusion cuisine style and kind of thing. I think trying to be a little elevated, you know? Yeah, I think they were trying to take a little bit more of like a sophisticated spin on some of those um, traditional staple Mexican and Caribbean kind yeah. of uh, flavors. Yeah. Whether or not they were su uh, successful in that is an entirely different thing, but we'll get into it, don't you worry. Yeah. From the moment you walk in, I guess that's where our problems began. Oh yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, it was we, a rough start for us. We should predicate all of this with the fact that it is Two days after Christmas. Two days after Christmas. It is a very busy day here at the Springs. It's very busy. I think when we were walking around before we came back here, you said this is like one of the busiest days you've ever seen. At Absolutely. Springs. So that, I mean. So there's that. Th that School's is like a, out. that's a huge factor in their ability to deliver service. And I think um, that kind of did weigh heavily on our experience right. tonight so you know you do have to take that into account uh -huh. that being said our experience was our experience and we had to show up for work today so we did what we had to do we ate there and yeah. we'll we'll share what happened right um as we walked up to the restaurant there was an enormous line spiraling out of the side of the restaurant and i have never seen a soul wait in line for this restaurant in yeah. my life so we I was, had a reservation. And yeah, we didn't, we weren't a walk up type of group. Morgan's not that type of girl. She's <laughs> got reservations five days ago. Yeah. So by the time we got there and we saw there were a line, we were like, oh, it's all these poor people. Not we poor people. To... It's all these unfortunate, not like financially unfortunate. It's all of these, <laughs> it's all of these people who didn't plan ahead. Didn't plan ahead. And are here. Trying to walk up. Are trying to find what they can find in Disney Springs. Oh no, we were the poor unfortunate souls. <laughs> yeah. Um, because the, that when we get walked up to the, <laughs> the check in. To the she check was in. Like, oh yeah, get in this line. She was like, oh yeah, we're just behind on reservations. This is the line of people with reservations. And we were like, oh right. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. We were like, oh. You want me to? Do what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even like. Because I have normally, virtual queue. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, normally they would ask for your phone number and say, we'll text you when your table's ready. That's the normal Disney thing. Right. So that's what we expected. So we asked if we could do that. They said yes, which we were a little confused about why we weren't given that and, option to begin with. And why these other 40 people aren't doing that. They're waiting in line out in the freezing instead of shopping while they're waiting. I don't know. Yeah, so we did it that. It was an unorganized mess. Yeah, a long story short, they clearly could not handle the like capacity of what was going on. I did feel bad for the people working there. 
Yeah. Um, as we walked into the restaurant, what were some of your first impressions? Um, it, it was just kind of chaotic. I, are you asking about the decor? Yeah, I, um, I kind of mean the ambience. I kind of mean the ambience. I kind of mean the ambiance. I kind of mean like the vibe. Obviously, I, I hear what you're saying. It was so crowded it that- It was weird because she said like, do you want a booth? And we're like, yeah. And then they took us to a five seater regular table. and. I, yeah. It, it, it was just chaotic and unorganized, and that's what I was focused on, so I didn't even really take in the ambiance. But yeah. On the way out, I noticed some of it. You know, there were big pictures. Yeah, we uh, were... Kind of Caribbean-inspired, even though I feel like the menu was kind of Mexican. Don't you? Like, it, it, it was, was more Mexican. It was definitely, like, an eclectic type of vibe. But like, I feel like it was a mishmash, like you said, but I think that it was leaned heavily into Mexican. I, it, I would agree that a lot of, like, they even have a Mexican burger on that menu, guacamole, all kinds salsa, of stuff. Salsa, queso. That you would kind of quesadillas. equate with, like, Tex-Mex or Mexican, yeah. you know, anyway, inspired foods. So, I, yeah, I got the kind of coastal coastal vibe. We were seated in kind of an area that I think would be amazing if we were there any other time because we were seated kind of right in front of these um, floor to ceiling um, roller windows yeah. that kind of operate like big pull-up garage doors where the entire wall basically becomes open air. Right. If it would have been daytime, we would have had a view of uh, Lake Buena Vista. We would have had a view of the... Yeah not hot air balloon, cold air balloon, as Morgan it has informed me, it is not a hot air balloon. Right, it's a helium balloon. What's in there, helium? Yeah. The helium balloon, the aerophile, we would have had a great view of it. But because it's nighttime and because it's cold, the windows were down. And, and we weren't by the... And it was dark. And we weren't by the window. I mean, we were like... Yeah, we were across room. from we the window. We were in a room with the window, but there were lots of tables and people in between us and the window. Yeah, but so basically the only ambiance we were taking in was the ceiling. Right, um, which they had these like big, I think coastal looking ceiling fans yeah. with the like, I don't know, it's not a leaf, but the, with the fan blades being kind of like that oval shape. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed the 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 decor that we did have around us. I, I did like it. We were greeted by a server when we sat down. They were very nice, the service. Um, the, both, we, we wound up having a different server at times. I think that maybe they were understaffed, um, but both the servers were nice. Yes, very friendly. Yeah, um, his service was slow, but that goes along with everything else that we talked about. I it's did kind busy. of expect that. I expected it too. Yeah, so, you know, if you have your expectations set correctly, you are much less likely to be disappointed. Um, I could tell that the staff was overwhelmed from the second we walked in, so I was kind of expecting us to have a little bit um, slower of a um, response time in terms of serving than we might normally. Yeah. Um, but real, what was really important was the food anyway. We ordered an appetizer to start, um, and which was, what it, did we get at first? It was like the dips trio or something. Yeah. It was called something like that, and it had guacamole, a queso, and salsa, and then like two things of chips. What did you like best? Um, I liked the queso best. I liked the queso a lot. I thought the queso was a pretty good texture and a pretty good flavor. It didn't make the mistakes that a lot of kind of Mexican inspired places do where the queso is like really salty or the queso is too thin or anything like yeah. that. I thought it was a good dependable queso. Yeah. The, um, the salsa wasn't for me. Okay. What, I thought it was fine. Uh, the guacamole had a big um, topping of Pico uh, de gallo, probably. Pico de gallo. Yeah. Um, the guacamole, honestly, for me, it was pretty bland. I, I, I liked that once you got down underneath the uh, onion and the tomato that was on top, that it didn't have a lot of chunks of, of onion in yeah, it. Yeah, the consistency was great, yeah. but I just, I like guacamole that has a little bit of a, you know, a flavor or a kick. Then we got our entrees. Um, Except for, for entrees. I like we also got some more appetizers that we had come out as entrees. Yeah. It was a little complicated. Price saving Disney hack. <laughs> if you want to like cut down on the cost of eating at some of these sit down restaurants, Morgan does this all the time. What's all your the tip? time? I love getting appetizers as my entree. Yeah, sometimes it's a really reasonable portion of food that would, you know, instead yeah. of supplementing an entree, actually ends up being a good you know, kind of replacement. Absolutely. And I mean, getting like three appetizers for my family of three works out to be just a little bit more than 
definitely two on i mean less than two entrees I'll right say. So what appetizers did you get in the set of entrees this time around um empanadas yes and then the poutine uh -huh. which i has a bigger name than that i'm sure it's being flashed on your screen now. yeah <laughs> and then the crazy corn it was crazy but not in a good way why not because they took three of those small corn ears cut them all the way in half um they were kind of like charred like yeah. grilled charred then laid them the flat side down and then covered them in little pieces of lime and then cheese and then melted the cheese so the lime was like hidden in the cheese so sometimes you'd accidentally get a bite of like whole lime and then but you're chewing no, on lime peel <laughs> but, <laughs> but there was also like no other seasoning it was just cheese and it was a very mild flavored cheese you kind of expect like a chunky cheese to go along with that like cotija is yes. that how you say that you would I think it's Cojita. Yeah, that's it's one of those. <laughs> you would expect that. You would expect some red pepper. You would expect. Uh, I expected some chili pepper. These are the things or, that you expect from a street corn. This is not a street corn. Or lime corn. juice be, having been on there, but it, I didn't taste lime juice unless I got a bite that was like a whole lime. You expect those things from street corn because street corn really works with those combinations yeah. of flavors. This was like almost like a deconstructed kind of version, but like some of the pieces were missing. So yes, and the it amount never really that came you together for a twenty dollar appetizer. It was legitimately three of those baby ears of corn cut in half. Yeah, with cheese on top. This honestly, for me, this is probably my least favorite. This was thing the we biggest had. miss for me. Like I, I would go as far as to say that this is a waste of money. Yeah. Nobody in our party really liked it. It seemed I like, hate it because twenty dollars yeah, is twenty dollars. Exactly. But like I wasn't I wasn't I over had the to move. add salt though. Like I, yeah. I, I'm just surprised. It really could have benefited from a little bit more love in the like creative department. flavor department. Poutine, poutine as they called it. It um, wasn't a poutine. Hello to our Canadian <laughs> um, viewership us. out there. You guys, this is a mockery. No, I'm just kidding. Of poutine. Um, we got this for you. <laughs> we got this for you. No, I love poutine. It didn't pan out. It didn't pan out. I love poutine normally. What are you excited for when you order poutine? The gravy, the cheese curds, like Textures. the whole. Textures. Yeah. This was like they took a scoop of shredded meat with the grease and everything and dumped it on some fries. It said that there were cheese curds on there, but I didn't see any. I got one solitary, lonely. Cheese curd? Yeah, and cheese then they curd. Had, they had some uh, sweet peppers that I- A I, couple. Uh, yeah, like like four. Yeah. And pieces, not four sweet peppers. And this is and, like a big bed of fries. Yes, and yeah. so I took one of the peppers and put it on my side plate and like cut it into little pieces so that I could get a little bit of that flavor with each bite, which only lasted for like four bites, of course that would made it better because yeah. it was an additional flavor but other than that it was like meat on fries which the grease from the meat made the fries really soggy i was just hoping for i didn't hate it overall don't I get didn't me hate wrong it either. I but just i just wish there was a little bit more flavor i wish there was like a a nice like can you imagine if there was a lovely chipotle kind of drizzle yeah. on there if there was some melted cheese going on not just a couple of cheese curds but I, like seriously if I didn't you're gonna do cheese curds, cheese curds maybe like commit and put a bunch of cheese see, curds and same with do, the peppers yeah. i think like if that's going to be something fun like a fun addition that you're adding to give it your spin then there should be more of it on there and then smaller pieces so you can actually get some more bites yeah the hero for me of our of these um the second round of appetizers <laughs> kind of yeah were these empanadas yeah Shocking. I really enjoyed that. I really, this is what I expected to like the least because I don't generally love empanadas because I'm not really a huge fan of brown meat and stuff, except, I mean, I like a cheeseburger, but. The dough of this was um, very crunchy. Like, yeah. what, what would you do? It reminded me of something, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Mm. It was like this really crunchy, really crispy, almost like. But then soft. Almost like, like an egg roll. Yeah, like, like it an almost egg roll. had the crunchiness of an egg roll yes. instead of the typical kind of um, pastry dough pie yeah. 
a kind of outside that an empanada normally has. Yeah. This kind of substituted that for that crunchy, crackly egg roll. And then the, the meat inside I thought was seasoned well really seasoned. well. Yeah. And then it came with this sauce, mm -hmm. this creamy kind of sweet sauce. Yeah. That really complemented it. it. And it was, yeah, it had some smokiness in it. Right. But it really complemented the empanada and made for a bite that was really satisfying, which I was so grateful for because I was afraid that everything might end up a little bland. Yeah. But this really had the brightness and yeah. the, you know, the acidity that you kind of want mm -hmm. in, you know, in, in this style of food. So I was really happy with it. I would get yeah, it again. I would too. I would say that if you're getting multiple appetizers, eat this one right away because I did go back for another bite, like after we had other stuff oh. and it probably had been 30 minutes yeah. and it wasn't as good then. Oh, that I makes think, sense. I think there was- Because it's really crispy. It's really something you need to eat like right. Right like away. McDonald's fries. You don't let those sit. You don't right. let those sit. Eat your fries first. How many times have we been over this? And then you got a sandwich. And then I got a sandwich. I got a Honolulu, so Hawaii is in this mix now. Oh, yeah. Um, a Honolulu pulled pork sandwich. This was a sandwich. confusing cuisine for me. Like, like oh, the menu yeah. overall. It was definitely like a touch of everything, yeah. yeah? I would say that this was, this was a good, this was a pretty good this offering. Good. It came on this nice seeded bun that um, I actually ended up really enjoying. The it, bun was sweet too, right? Yeah, it had some sweetness to it. The pineapple in it gave it a lot of flavor that I was really happy about. And the barbecue sauce was also sweet. And the sauce of the pulled pork was like, the sweet, but also kind of a little smoky, well, you know, yeah, well was, seasoned kind of package that ended up being the sandwich. It was good. Yeah, it ended up being one of my favorite things that we tried. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was really excited for it. And then we uh, we even went and got dessert too yeah, because yeah. we saw uh, we saw something walk by that we thought, mm -hmm. oh, that would be good to try. Yeah. So we got this. Um, this like a, I think it was called a paradise upside down cake right which only makes sense Pacific upside down cake ah there you go yeah that yeah so this was now this was what it's a 12 pineapple upside 12 down. it was 12 dollars and, and pretty small like cupcake, yeah. the size of a cupcake small. the serving of this i would say um is a little small for 12 dollars. i thought the flavor was pretty good it reminded me of like a duncan hines box cake <laughs> you know that flavor of like a cake that you make yourself from like a box okay yeah this kind of had that yeah. flavor um but that with the ice cream with like the pineapple and the drizzle they had the on drizzle, there yeah i didn't it was like a caramel yes. drizzle or something yes. i really didn't mind it i thought it was i enjoyed it i just if i don't look at the price i know <laughs> I just eat it yes i liked it agreed, you know what i mean agreed. it was good i don't think it was worth 12 dollars if I, you take value out I of it i thought it was a little dry but then when you got the caramel and the ice cream that really helped it and then it was all good that was honestly one of their more thought through offerings because they're like oh this cake it might be a little on the dry side give them the ice cream give them the drizzle you know mm -hmm. it, it ended up being pretty balanced and nice if yeah. you haven't if you hadn't picked up on this balance is a huge part of what we look for yeah because any you know any dish that you're eating you really want to feel convinced that you're going on this like well prepared well paired up thought through kind of flavor journey that's what you yeah. hope for right for paying these sit down prices absolutely at disney so we kind of walk in with those expectations and kind of hope that they meet them i would say that this actually did a pretty good job of fulfilling the brief of like being well thought out and a good bite the dessert the dessert okay but we'll get down uh to what we think of the restaurant as a whole right now mm -hmm. because we're going to be getting into the ratings of these things yeah we do this um for every restaurant we kind of go through each facet of the experience and see um how many kind of points we would like to award it. Mm -hmm. And see what Jake comes up with as our unit of measurement. Of course, and you can't have dinner at a restaurant like this without rating things out of five upside down pineapples. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, little did you uh, know. I lose the bet. The way so that we're you... doing a, a bet now to see what <laughs> we think Jake will choose. If you guys want to play along next time, pause before we get to the rating. Oh, it's a game. <laughs> I can't wait to see the comments. I bet none of you voted <laughs> upside, upside down, down pineapple. pineapple. It's actually because, because... He, does, he didn't say upside down pineapple cake. He just said an upside down pineapple. It's a little bit rare. People might not know. It's this <laughs> exotic strain of the pineapple plant. And the reason it's called... Um, pineapple upside down cake is because they harvest 
these um, upside, upside down, down pineapples. pineapples. You can actually find one on Living with the Land. So the next time you guys go on there, you'll see the upside down pineapple tree. They, um, the cast members ride the ride, they get out of the boat, they steal one from the tree, they finish the ride, they get off with the upside down pineapple, and they walk it on foot from Epcot to, to this restaurant. Just, for this cake. Yeah, and they put that with the box cake mix and they're good to go. All right. <laughs> wow, that was such an elaborate story. Out of five, <laughs> out of five upside down pineapples. What are you thinking about the location, the, the convenience, the transportation, all of these kind of convenience factors for this restaurant? Where are you thinking? I'm going with a four. I'm going with a four. If you're in Disney Springs, this is convenient. If you're staying at Old Key West or Port Orleans, Saratoga, this is, Saratoga, this is just a boat right away. Yeah, you And got... everybody should come to Disney Springs once during their trip or if you're pass holders kind of regularly, so. We or, highly recommend taking advantage of the springs. Yes. Um, so this is definitely a convenient location. It's kind of in a really, really convenient spot at Disney Springs, so much so that we're like, well, which garage will give us the shorter yeah. walk? Because it's right between the, the orange and the lime. So yeah. it's really convenient. You've got a great view of the aerophile, which is the cold air balloon, no, the helium balloon. That's kind of the icon of Disney Springs. So it's kind of cool that it's in such a good location. Mm -hmm. So that's got it going for it. Yes. Stella got her group Congratulations. Back. Absolutely. So what are we thinking then? Because uh, it's going downhill for, for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> just like an upside down pineapple falling off the tree, rolling downhill, things take a turn. Yeah. You know? Um, and Not that it was bad. But anyway, go on. Um, what are you thinking about like the ambiance of this? Is that what we do next? Yeah. Two two upside down pineapples. So what, what turned you off so much? It just wasn't anything special to me as far as ambiance goes. Now, if we had a window seat and it was during the day and we had a really great view, that would completely change things. I completely agree. Yeah, but otherwise, I just don't think that it was over the top. And I don't think it was that different from like a mall restaurant. No. It was themed the bathroom. I went in the bathroom, it's outdated and gross. So that was yeah. a negative. Experiences like that can really impact your opinion of things. I liked it a little bit more. I would I would maybe go up to a three, but that'll put us at two and a half upside down pineapples. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. Sometimes those pineapples, they have to get cut in half. Yeah, to, what do you cut it in half with? Um, machete? James Cameron. No. <laughs> yeah, machete, for sure. Machete. <laughs> of course. Okay. What kind of questions? Is that? I know. I know. I don't know. Scissors? I have no idea. Scissors? I don't, Big I, scissors. I've never heard of this elusive upside down pineapple. So stick with me, kids. Stick with me. Okay. <laughs> what's next? You know what's next? It's that good flavor, old quality. Never been one of them. No. Never but been quality one. and flavor are pretty much the same thing. Quality, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what did you think of the flavor? <laughs> Out of five upside down pineapples. Two. two. <laughs> All of that for I two upside down. But I don't. Um, because the thing is, that there's a lot that I would be Change. very quick to forgive in terms of like service, in terms of all these yeah, things, because we it was were, really busy. We were really understanding about the service but and in the, terms way, of the like, weirdness at the beginning. <laughs> but in terms of like the quality of the ingredients. Is there anything I want to come back for? The empanadas I would come back for. The If you order food from the bar, if you can, I would order the empanadas and go. Yeah. You know? That, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, flavor, definitely a two if we're doing flavor. Um, if you want to talk about... Quality? If you want to talk about the quality of the food, I would also give this two. Yeah. I, because... Nothing yeah. struck me as being a super flavorful, super fresh kind of experience. And it's... It's a little sad because, you know, they're in the company of some really high profile restaurants yeah, here. Some of our favorite Disney restaurants are in Disney Springs. So we're spoiled. But if you're coming to us oh. to learn yeah. kind of what is the best option for you, we're going to tell you what we enjoyed and what we didn't enjoy. And yes. this one, this one, as far as quality goes for me, is not really bang for your buck material. Agreed. Yeah. So two okay. upside down pineapples there. And then finally, Value. This is the most important one for a lot of people. Um, the value of the restaurant. This is, I would say, a very mid-range kind of Disney Springs experience. You're eating for maybe a little bit over $30 a person at the end of the day. The uh, Yeah, the entrees looked like they were right around between, uh, between 25, 20 and, and, yeah. 25 and 35, maybe 20. Yeah. And, and uh, the appetizers were 
more expensive than normal. The appetizers like were a little bit. Like that corned bean, twenty dollars was a little crazy. The um, poutine was twenty-two. I think the the chips and salsa trio was like eighteen. Yeah. So we're talking like twenty-dollar appetizers. Yeah, appetizers and definitely. And were also like twenty bucks. The appetizers were a little bit more expensive than normal for a Disney restaurant. The entrees How were much pretty was your moderately priced. My sandwich, I think, was like twenty-four dollars, twenty-three dollars, or something. So and it came with fries. That's about mid-range, you know. That's nothing crazy um however i will say that for the quality of the food that you are getting the value does kind of go down now in terms of like will you be filled absolutely this is filling food this is nourishment you won't leave hungry but you also won't leave saying i will come back here every day of my life like we kind of want to for some disney restaurants oh yeah, yeah. we think oh if i could eat here every day i would yeah sometimes we walk out of a restaurant and go that was totally worth the insane amount of money i just spent and then sometimes it's like oh i really feel like i wasted my money yeah so unfortunately for me this skews towards the i wasted my money yeah so that unfortunately for the quality i would say this is also a yeah. Two upside I, down I pineapples. was considering a one, so maybe one and a half. Oh, huh, yeah. Because, like, $20 for three baby ears of corn really, really, like... That does tip the scale a little bit. It, when you've yeah. got something that leaves that big of an impression on you, it makes it a little tough. And even the upside down cake, which I thought was good, was very small for $12 and not amazing. No, I yeah. I would much rather... There are so many desserts around here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You... It, and, you know, I feel like sometimes the Disney Springs ones we have to go a little extra hard on because the competition yeah, is stiff. Because compet like, look around door, you. There's, there's so much. You've got we're some right of the best restaurants in Orlando. Logo, we're right by Gideon's for dessert. You know what I mean? It, yeah. There's salt and straw up there. Take that $20 that you spent on, you know, some dessert here and go get you some really good cookies. Go get, you know, there are so many good options. So we're gonna tabulate the scores and we're gonna assign an overall rating to this restaurant. Well, what what is that gonna be at value between the two of us? You said two. So oh. should we do a one and a half? Let's do let's do yeah, let's do one and a half. Okay. Let's slice that pineapple in half. Sorry, Michael. And we'll, <laughs> and we'll go That's for okay, it. That's okay because we had another half too, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the half asset is already there, you know how it is. Uh, so um, we're going to tabulate the scores real quick. Give us a second because we're bad at math and we'll be right back with the final <laughs> score. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're back. We're back. We've done some math. We, we got out our visors. It was really cute. You should have been there. Yeah. We got out our visors. We did this. I don't know. Does that make, does that yeah. make money counting yeah. sounds? I don't know. So um, we've tabulated our score. And the final score out of 10 upside down pineapples for Paradiso 37 is... Five out of ten. So, unfortunately, that is not a super high rating as far as these things go. If you're like a last minute and you, you're looking for reservations and there's nothing available, then maybe this is for you. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point to if keep, you've to keep tried it real. Everything, if you're local and you've tried everything, you just want to try one more. Yeah, to go keep, for yeah. it. If you're like, if and also, if you I, love empanadas, I don't think the daytime ambiance should be underestimated because if you end up with a really good view of you know Lake Buena Vista of the Aerofile, then you know that might really be a nice. A, a nice last resort for you if you've got no other options right. and you need to pick somewhere um, kind of left over at least you might end up with a good view here so I think that kind of a something yeah you know um, but other than that I don't think this is going to be one that I'm rushing back to or recommending the I honestly had really never heard of this restaurant and unfortunately it seems like there's a pretty good reason yeah yeah all right. Well, if you guys have a different opinion, if you had a really good experience at this restaurant, let us know. We'll we would, try it again. We would love to know. Or if you tell were just, us what to order, though, so we know what to come back and try. Yeah, this was just our experience, so we can only speak to what we've lived, and this is what we live today. But mm -hmm. we would also love to know if there's a similar restaurant doing similar things that you guys kind of think is comparable to this restaurant that you would maybe recommend. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and subscribe to our channel. That really helps us out a lot. Yep. And you can find us online as well. Yes, and of course, listen to our podcast, which is called Neverland Navigation Radio. 
that's our favorite thing to do, right? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, that's such we love a, all of it. That's but. such a fun time to just sit down and talk about our favorite stuff and get you guys in on the so conversation. Because we're so passionate about all things Disney, so. Absolutely. This week. Join in the conversation with us. Yeah, this week we talked about, um, we had a Christmas kind of spectacular where we talked about some of our favorite holiday stuff. Um, but we've always got fun new topics to listen through. So start from the beginning because <laughs> yeah. we really cover a lot of ground and you never know what might come back around in a future episode. Sure, you yeah. can also find us online um, on Instagram and on TikTok at Neverland Navco. We post a lot of fun um, history and facts about the park, but yeah. we also kind of make short form content about some of our experiences here at Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. And all of it is a good time. So make sure you give us a follow over there. Absolutely. Check us out at NeverlandNavigation.co. That's where you can find links to all of our social media, but also the blog that I write. Morgan writes a great blog over there that's really worth checking out if you're looking for written form content about the parks. And then lastly, on Etsy, we're Neverland Navigation. Yeah, I'm wearing a Neverland Navigation shirt right <laughs> now. It says, make it a super stretch, which is a reference to the great rock and roller coaster pre-show. Um, but other, uh, there's other awesome Disney park inspired designs on there as well. If you're looking for some park gear before your next trip. Absolutely. Other than that, thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you on our next adventure. Bye! Bye! Wait. You take the money and you go, wow, wow. Yeah, but what? <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Start at the beginning. What was the first one we did? It's not. I'm not bad at math. I'm bad at remembering what we scored everything. Shouldn't you we be doing flavor? You ever had Taco Bell when it's like 3 a.m.? Okay, but then so shouldn't we be doing flavor, not quality? Morgan wants to rewrite the I show. I want to rewrite the show. I, I think we should be talking about flavor. Save it for the writer's room. Oh my gosh. <laughs>